Okay, I'm gonna start working today on some more of these bullet points here. And uh, the last time I worked on the distributor, went through it and put uh, new points, condenser, put a new uh, bottom plate, top plate, which is the wireless kind that just rubs against each other. Um, I think today I'm going to work on testing the grounds, make sure it's getting good continuity between it. Um, before that, I had installed the starter and I wired the, the starter up and rotated the engine, check compression, so I checked that already and I haven't tested for sparks, so I installed the battery and the cables and disconnect switch well, and fuse so I kind of got the battery and all its cables set up um maybe if i get to it um i sort of have the, the coil set up and mounted and then check the timing and i need to do that but i think where i'm going to start today is doing some wiring for uh temporary wiring up the the ignition so that it can actually test run and fire. So let me get to that and we'll get started on that. Well, you can see I managed to build a little cross beam here and attached it. I screwed it from the back side. There's some two um, where the cowl mounts. There's holes, so I just ran the screws through those and uh, used this uh, old scrap wood I had laying around. And I've got a little wedge here to hold it in place for now. There's a fitting right here just on this side of it and uh, I don't have a cap for it which I don't really like but I need to get a fitting and then the, be able to run the lines to the carburetor so the normal carburetor line comes out and over and the gas tank ends about here so this is actually further back also but you know if I strap this around the tank and around the board i can do some like long zip ties and straps or something and uh, it'll stay there and uh you know be fine for now and it'll, it would actually be able to remove it with the body if i need to so um i guess I've got to keep working on figuring that out to be able to get a gas line over to the carburetor now and uh, finish up on the distributor. Okay, I think I'm going to start working on uh, doing a little bit of temporary wiring on the wooden firewall that I created. Uh, went and dug out all my wire spools and uh, heat gun, heat shrink, terminals, and I'm going to put together a little bit of wiring, just, you know, enough under the under the hood wiring to uh, 
to be able to get some spark and get the ignition working on it. Um, I already got the starter set up and those cables run. I need to connect up the coil, the ignition switch, the distributor, and I'm just going to put together a couple of little uh, segments of wire and duplicate what a wiring harness would, would be from a, like a Model A vendor. So I'm going to try to make it look like an original Ford. Okay, I got a test meter, a ohm meter, to, uh, to try to test the wiring before I actually hook it up and check for spark. And uh, what I was going back and forth on is, yeah, I got a good ground, but even when the points are closed, my points arm is not grounding. So it's not it's not jumping the gap right there and I couldn't figure out I went back saw the time lapse went back and checked the uh, the gap but then what I was noticing is when you know, what I was doing was move the spark lever to where it's off the lobe and then on the lobe you know you should be able to get about um, you know 10 degrees off the lobe and, and then right on the lobe just by moving the uh, spark lever and uh, to be able to test when your points are opening and closing if they're making contact and they weren't making contact so I thought a brand new set of points um, I'll file them down you know maybe there's something oil or something that's stopping them and uh, they still, and I check the gap again, and I, they still aren't making contact. You know, and it's not one of the problems I, I, I thought I had, and could have been a little bit of the issue, is I hadn't put the set screw in on the distributor yet. So I went ahead and did that to where I got a good constant ground now. Um, sometimes when I was moving the lever and, and the housing would shift just a little bit, I would lose the, the contact with ground. But still, like right now, it's off the lobe and you know, I could rotate the uh, onto the lobe and then off the lobe. And uh, what I found is and I, I could see it if I look really close is sometimes when this lever is moved I uh, I get ground across the, the points and I can let me bring you in here and I'll show you what's going on so when I'm moving the spark advance here, maybe I get the meter too. So this side is the other side of the points. So when I move the advanced lever, you can see I got, that's what I get from over here. When I just ground it out, I get about 0.4 ohms you know, going through everything. So when I, uh, you can see this is, see when I bring it up on the lobe and then comes off the lobe and you can see the points are open. 
but when I'd move this lever, the spark advance lever, they're closed. There's that much play. And it's not in the shaft here. You think, oh, it's just the, the distributor shaft bushings are bad. It's not in the shaft. It's in the plate in this groove. There's that much movement in the groove. See, I can move it back and forth. Just you can hear it clunking. So it's, let's see if I can get up close. So it has that much gap, which is um, about 10, 12,000, something like that. But then when I move the lever, it's actually grounding and like I can get it on the meter. There it is. So when I'm, I'm moving this plate back and forth, it's actually opening and closing the points and um, uh, it's just this either the top plate is not made correctly and is wore out over here on the tabs there's like three little tabs that catch or the distributor housing itself you know, over 90 years that little groove has wore that much so i'm not sure what i'm going to do about that now this is a brand new top plate and uh you know i could try to put a brand new distributor housing on it and see if that makes a difference well i'm sure it would make a difference but you know, if this is detrimental to it running, you know, I can't even get it. But, you know, the other thing is the, uh, it's going to have six volts that can jump across this gap and spark. You've seen people spark them. And, but, but the other thing is you, you're going to have to, uh, compensate the gap for inner maybe i'm gonna do uh less than 20 thousandths maybe i'm gonna try to crank it down to maybe 18 thousandths and see what it does So I think what makes the biggest difference is disconnecting the uh, spark advance lever. It's, it's got, it's putting a little pressure on the plate and uh, it's actually pulling the, the plate kind of sideways in the groove. So it, you know, it's working fine without that lever on there. And once it starts coming down off the cam, makes contact and grounds out. So it's this is actually putting a little bit of horizontal tension on it. You know, and it's a, it's actually enough that even when I close the the points way down, when I rotate it, it puts just enough torque on there, and I could give it a little shove, and it slides in that slot and it grounds the plate is grounded by the spring that's coming up through it it's the plate shifting and is actually opening the points just enough so that they don't make contact hmm that's a new one but i'm gonna have to think about that uh, the other stuff I was doing, you know, uh, I was running a power wire up. This is just an old uh, junction box that I had 
pulled off another Model A and I just am using it to as a connector point right now, just screwed to this wood, just to kind of keep it like a normal setup. And then I run it over to the coil. Other side of the coil comes from the ignition switch, which goes to the base of the distributor, which goes to the lower plate, which comes to the upper plate, which comes to here, which should be trying to ground the coil out so it'll spark. And so I think all that wiring is correct and I drew it out on my, my sheets of paper over there. I drew it out several times to try to get it straight in my head. And uh, I tried to use the same color wiring, like this yellow should come up to this side, go to the amp, this side goes to the generator also, and then it goes to the amp meter, and then from the amp meter back to the other side of the junction box. And that's actually where this should be, is over on this other side, but no, there, there wasn't any real point just to run a wire from here to there. So I just connected it right here on the, the same as this side for right now, because I don't have an amp meter hooked up. But then it goes just sort of always hot to the uh, coil. And when the ignition switch grounds out to the distributor by the points, that's when you get your spark. So that's, you know, some of the, it's really confusing is running it, what you think from the battery right to the coil that it would be like hot all the time, which it is. But you're you're not getting the the loop, you're getting it grounded. So I I think I'm sort of set up with the the wiring just for this temporary setup. The other thing I did was I went ahead, I found a, a gas cap for this, so I can put some gas in there and not worry about it splashing and dumping out. Got a little short piece of hose for right now because this. The firewall should actually be right here, and this all this setup is you know, behind the gas tank. So I just have this little rubber hose connected, and I can go ahead and hook up the Zenith carburetor and the fuel lines, and. Uh, start working on the fuel side of the thing, but I need to figure out and finish this ignition so that I can get it to where it'll crank and spark. And then I'll start work, work, working on gas and carburetors. But I'm gonna figure out, you know, maybe I just need a, uh, a newer distributor housing. Uh, this is probably an original and I don't know if the newer ones, that, that slot where the plate fits in has just a little bit of horizontal movement in it. And it's opening and closing the uh, points, or it's actually holding them open so that they don't close. I'm kind of thinking, you know, we were having a lot of trouble with my dad's pickup, his uh, 1930 pickup, the distributorship, distributor broke on it. The actual housing where it goes into the cylinder head broke off. It's in the other video about his uh, pickup truck. And uh, so we got a, another distributor and I got it for him just off eBay. It looked good to me and clean, but I had it shipped to him and he did the, uh, the refresh on it, the overall so I'm not really sure what kind of condition that distributor was. I don't know if he just took the points and stuff out of his old one, which you know, the truck was running, and put it in this replacement distributor, or if he actually bought new stuff and put in there. But I've been wondering if like the horizontal movement on the shaft itself on this older distributor, if the bushings are bad. But now looking at this you know it could be this slot that the upper plate fits in you know 
I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but it's actually actually click click clicking as I'm moving it back and forth. And this is a brand new top plate. Brand new meaning hopefully it's in spec like it's supposed to be. Don't know. I think that's it for now. Got some wiring done on it and uh need to figure out this distributor though. Alright everybody. Take care, like and subscribe, have a good day.